Hey, this is Philip with MLC CAD Systems, and I'd like to take a few minutes to look at SOLIDWORKS model based definition and specifically the creation of 3D views. Now, because 3D views are dynamic, they're easier to understand and interpret than any traditional 2D print, whether you're looking at them inside of SOLIDWORKS, e drawings, or 3D PDFs. But they can also be easier to create and understand because of the familiar environment of SOLIDWORKS. Let's take a look at this from the engineering side. What I've got here is an underwater camera housing, and this has a blue gear plate component that I need to document for manufacturing. Now, I know my manufacturer pretty well. If I send them a SOLIDWORKS part, they're going to use their CNC machine and have every dimension within plus or minus five thousandths of an inch. But I actually need some real tight tolerancing on this part. Here you can see I've got two bolts which mount this plate uh, to the gear plate. Those are going to be tight fit holes. I've also got two bores in my part where I'm going to have radial bearings, and those need to be tightly tolerant. To add to the complication here, I've got shafts that are drilled all the way through my component so that these gears mesh together and the teeth work like they should every single time we make this part. So as an engineer, how do I deal with all that information? Well, model-based definition makes this really easy. Let's open this up on its own and notice we're in the same familiar SOLIDWORKS environment you already know how to use, and 3D views simply appear at the bottom of the graphics area. I'm going to make a new 3D view and I'm going to save myself quite a bit of time here. Not only do these views remember the orientation, but they remember the dimensions or annotations that are in those orientations. So let's make some on the fly here using the intelligence of the auto dimension scheme. Using this scheme, I'm just going to pick a few datums. This is going to be where I measure from, like the bottom of my part, or where my zero zeros are, known positions are, such as where this radial bearing is going to line up or also where I bore a shaft all the way through my part. And since this shaft is bored in one operation, I'll specify that and capture 100% of that info. That way I won't make any mistakes in the future. Now I just need to select what pieces of information do I need to dimension here. Let's start off with the holes that mount this to the plate. Notice how they both highlight immediately because MBD recognizes the normal intelligence of SOLIDWORKS that this was done in a pattern, so it's going to put a 2x and prevent me from missing any information. I also need to dimension this rear board hole here for the other bearings, and I'll just hit the green check, and just like that, pretty much all my dimensioning work has been created. Every single datum, A, B, and C, has been created for me, as well as the dimensions for size and location, and their correct G, D, and T callouts according to my standard. What makes this really even easier to understand is the color coding. So you can see in green here, these faces have been 100% defined in space, I don't have to worry about missing a dimension, it's very easy to see. Now you already know how to operate SOLIDWORKS, so you're probably already familiar with trees, and I have a tree display for these animations as well. Notice the cross highlighting, how easy is that for me to click on a dimension and see the associated geometry highlight. Very easy to understand where I am in this project. Now I'd like to make a few views here, I just added those dimensions, so let's start out with the top view and you can see one size dimension in place. I'm also going to need the basic dimensions for this or its location to those uh, datums. And I can do this with a tree on a simple right click, I'll recreate the basic dimensions. Two of them came into the view I wanted, two of them actually came into a different orientation but that's no problem, on a right click I can simply flip them into the view I want. Now if we reorient and take a look at the top, there's not much left to do except maybe clean this up, get the orientation exactly like I like on the screen, how I want to share with manufacturing looks pretty good to me, and simply capture the 3D view. This is capturing this orientation as well as just the annotations that I'm putting here on the top plane, and I'm done. Not only can I create the dimensions on the fly using these auto schemes, I can capture the orientation that quickly as well. How about if I want to add some more information, like a front view or maybe something about these uh, hole patterns here. Again, I can use the automatic dimensioning scheme, simply pick the settings that I want here, uh, what type of dimensioning I want to do where I want to measure from. Again, if I choose a hole, SOLIDWORKS will automatically notice all of the holes that make sense uh, or are done in a pattern, though I have the flexibility to just do one. And in an instant, I get the color coding, the annotations that I need, and I can put them all inside the orientation that I need. Just a few clicks, I can capture a front 3D view, just taking these annotations. And in a couple of seconds here, I know where I am in the project uh, with respect to documentation and I've already got very easy to understand 3D views captured. So I hope you see here in just a second that 
I was able to use the familiar environment of SOLIDWORKS to really have no learning curve here. I used definition coloring both in the tree and with highlighted faces so I could very quickly understand where I'm at in the project. Auto dimensioning and highlighting of those faces in green not only puts my dimensions on there automatically, but lets me know that I haven't forgot one and prevents any mistakes.